Hey everybody, it's Nick. Uh, today's tutorial is going to talk about how to export an animation from Studio Max into Unity. And the animation that we have today is something that my students made. They made this hammerhead shark that uh, swims. It's a really nice effect. So they have a low poly model that they made. And the way that this operates is that there is a, um, a wave modifier, like a space warp. And it's bound to this geometry. And then when the um, when the wave moves, it causes the the geometry to uh, move with it. So there's so there's sort of like a deformation that happens in the space. The problem is is that you can't export um, space deformations into Unity, uh, but you can export um, vertex transformations. And this is a hack that I that I read about on a YouTube video. Uh, but there's no like um, there's no voiceover. Some of the text is in German, um, and so again, not this is not my method, but I have figured out a way to make it work with 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 the more modern version of Studio Max and Unity. So there's some benefit to looking at this. Uh, but the first thing that we have to do though is we have to actually get this this uh, this shark to swim on a path. And the way that I do that uh, would be just to simply make uh, a line. And in this case, I'm going to make the type smooth, and that's going to give me a nice, like, interpolated um, kind of curve from the get-go. And I'm just going to draw just kind of a basic loop in this case, and just going to allow that to close. If I go into the um, line modifier, I can go ahead and turn on the vertices, and I can move them around if I need to. Um, if I need to reshape it, I'm not going to cover all the different things about shape editing uh, in this case. But and then the other thing you can do is. If you go into a different view, like a front view or you know back view or something like that, if you move if you move the points up and down, you can also make that path um, three dimensional, and it'll it'll automatically like interpolate um, into something really nice and spatial. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to animate the shark uh, on the path, and the way to do that is with a path controller and that's a pretty pretty basic thing you can do in studio max so it's really useful so i'm going to start by taking the shark uh object actually i gotta get out of my line here is it gonna let me get out of there there we go okay click on the shark see it's got the wave binding that's the that's that's the part that's not gonna uh, work later so we're gonna go ahead and take and we're gonna go to motion up here and open up the assign controller panel click on transform and then click on this little icon here to assign controller and oh wait I just messed this up just go to go to the position frame here and then click on the assign controller button and then we're gonna go to path constraint click OK and then under path parameters we're gonna go add path and then we're gonna add this path and actually I kind of messed up here before I do that if you want to rescale your keys, I would definitely do that before you do anything else. It's possible to rescale your time and remap your keys and stuff, but I, I haven't, I found it, it doesn't always work the way you want it to. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo that quick. Um, and then if I wanna rescale time, I can go up to, uh, I believe it's uh, tools. Yeah, I just kinda mess this up here. Uh, let's see here. Okay, um, actually the, the rescale time uh, button is actually down here. Uh, click on that, and then you can say uh, length. So if you want to make it three times as long, you can make it 300. Um, you can change the speed in Unity of the animation, um, but I think if you, if you want more fidelity, like more kind of keyframes or whatever, I would, I would look at that here. So you think about maybe 30 frames per second so 300 frames is going to give you 10 seconds of motion it's, it's kind of up to you how you want to do that uh i i would experiment with that uh, like between making frames in studio max and then actually changing the speed um when you're when you're doing things in unity but i think i think like 100 is too is too small so then just hit rescale time and uh all that should be fine but i, I would do that before you apply keys just it's just a little bit easier to do um, so just kind of think ahead. Okay, so back to the shark. I'm going to go into the motion tab and then say add path and then click on the path. And then you want to check follow. Don't check bank because that actually changes the uh, the kind of like direction of it. Uh, but if you if you scrub, you can see that that shark's going to nicely uh, follow that. And that's exactly what you want. Okay. 
If your object is 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 not uh, properly oriented, go ahead and play with the axis controls here. I would not mess with the rest of this stuff. I think that's all that's all fine. But you you can see the keys being animated here. It says the percentage along the path. But you will notice if you zoom in that we have mostly lost our swimming. Like it's not really moving back and forth, and and that is the issue. So what we're gonna do is kind of hacky, but it'll work. Um, go ahead and select the uh, the wave, and then go go back to the motion control again. Do the same thing. So go transform position, open up the sign controller, go to path constraint, go OK, and then we're gonna add that to the uh, to the path. Oh, which I screwed up because I'm doing it in the wrong uh, frame here. Hang on a second. Make sure you're, you're adding it um, at the proper keyframe. They, they want to be in the same same frame. Okay, so, so we're starting at frame zero. Go to position, and we're going to add the path constraint. And now I'm going to go ahead and hide this. Let's just go to hide selected. If we, if we look at this, uh, too fast, <laughs> too fast. Maybe if I look at it in the top view. Yep, you can you can see it kind of going there. So that's so that's good. But it does look, it does look like I messed something up though with the controller. So I got to go back and unhide this person here. Oh. Yeah, okay. Let me make sure that I got that right. There we go. And then just make sure you click on follow. I think I, I must have just accidentally did that. There you go. Now we can see the shark The shark is actually um, uh, here. I don't know. If those keys aren't working for you, just go ahead and grab those and make them take them all the way to 300. I don't know. I don't know what the problem with that, all that is, but... Strange. I mean, unfortunately, it's, it's pretty easy to. Here you go. Just move these over to 300. Uh, I don't know what's up. There. Now they stay together. Okay. Fine. Fair enough. So the one thing that I I forgot about this too, whoops, is that it isn't just enough for this to move with it. it, it we actually have to animate the um, the motion uh, of the wave itself. Otherwise, it's not it's not going to actually change anything. So let's go ahead and do auto key, and then go all the way to 300, and then change the phase to something like 30. You can see that it's changed there. There you go. And now now you can see them moving. You got to do both of those things. Okay, so now we've got a shark that's moving on a path. We've got our plane that's moving along a path, uh, our, our uh, space warp, and it's animated. Let's turn off auto key here. You can see as a shark comes along here, look at that, moving around. You can really tell here. Solid. Okay, let's go ahead and save at that point. That's a, that's a good time to save your file. Okay. Now we got to get this thing out, and when you export to the FBX, it's actually not—it's not going to uh, work. All you're going to get is the shark swimming on the path. You're not going to get the, um, the the motion that comes from the uh, from the wave modifier. So the way that we're going to do that is is again based on this other video, and I'll put a link to it in the com in the um, in the comments section uh, of the video. But um, the way that this works is that you you start with the geometry. Um, and let's go back to zero. You're going to do a snapshot. And a snapshot basically can make a mesh of every single uh, frame of this thing. And you're going to use that to generate a morph. And the morph targets are going to give us the movement of the vertices. So go ahead and, and, and uh, go ahead and go all the way back to zero with your, like with your animation. You're going to, you're going to go up to the... Um, I'm going to pull this out just to get rid of it know how what i can do with that but anyway gonna gonna go ahead and right click on the on the, on the top and you want to open up the extras uh panel let me turn off 
brushes, that's what it is. Um, go to extras. See this panel right here? And then you can hold down the uh, mouse button on this to open up the snapshot here. And I think you can get it in the tools menu. Yeah, snapshot, that's probably easier. easier. And then you're gonna go on to go range and you're gonna go from zero to 300 and you're gonna make, in this case, 300 copies because you want probably 301 actually. And you wanna say mesh. And then boom, it's gonna make all these like sharks, gonna make all these meshes. And that's what you're gonna use to generate the morph targets. So the 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 like, geometry that I have is called is called P cube uh, two, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select um, everything else. So I'm going to go here in the uh, selection window, and I'm going to go select P cube three all the way down to P cube three hundred three. You can see they're all selected, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to apply a uh, edit poly modifier because I want to get access to those vertices. Okay. Gonna go ahead and select vertex and then control A select all. Okay. Then I'm gonna go with all that selected, I'm gonna go and select PQ2. Okay. And then I actually I'm gonna go back to sorry PQ3. And this is only selecting the one morph target of this whole thing. It's not selecting um anything else, but it still has the vertices selected. If I would choose any of these other ones, it's, those are still selected. That's important because I need those targets for the morph. And so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add a morpher modifier. You can see that. And then I'm gonna go through and say load targets and I'm gonna load in all the other targets. And it's gonna import all the uh, all the vertices. And it's gonna, it's gonna crunch for a bit. And now these are the morph targets. And if I zoom in, I'm actually going to go in and hide everything else here. I just say hide selected. Okay, so now we're just looking at this one. So if I go into that morpher and I zoom in, you can see that if I add, so that's the difference between the first target and the second target, the difference between the first target and the and the one after that. And so there's just a little bit of a difference from each move to the next. And that morph, so we've taken an animation and we've told the computer that it's actually a morph, which is, which is kind of a trick. And so all it's gonna do is move and transform those points all the way along here. And you'll hopefully see that, that kind of fish kind of movement that we had before, okay? Um, so that's so that's the part that that uh, yeah so but to do that we actually have to do a little bit of scripting because what we need to do is for every single keyframe that's in this thing we want to go from zero here to a hundred and then go make this zero make this a hundred make this zero make this hundred go all the way through three hundred times and that's exactly what scripts are good at so to do that we're going to go into the little wrench here and then we're going to go into max script. And then we're going to run, well, first of all, we're going to open up the script. And I've got this script that I made. And this is based on a script that, again, was found on this YouTube channel. Uh, what you're going to change is change the numbering here. And I didn't. I made this from 1 to 299. I was having some problem with the array if I started at 0. And I'm just kind of manhandling it just to make sure that it works. Um, and then you take the name of the first object, the object that has the morpher, and you're going to replace that here okay and you're going to make sure that the dollar sign is in front of it because that is the clue to max script that that's a variable okay so you get all that stuff in there and then you can just run um, evaluate all and you can see it's making all those all those things okay and that's your clue that it's working and for further evidence that it's working you can go all the way back and you can see now i see all these red things here as I scrub through, watch, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100. That's exactly what I was talking about. And if we scrub, now you can see the fish slowly kind of wagging. It's, you know, moving its body, moving its tail, shark. And that is exactly what we want, folks. If you've got that, go ahead and save your file again. And now you're ready to export. So go to File, Export, and I'm going to say Export Selected. 
uh, just throw it in the export folder. So you know, my shark. It's great. And I'm saving it as an Autodesk FBX. These are the settings that I use. These are the ones that everybody uses pretty much. So under geometry, smoothing groups, turbo smooth, convert deforming, uh, preserve edge orientation. Animation, make sure animation is checked. If it's not, that's not gonna help. Start and end, bake animation, uh, resample. Make sure deformations is checked. You want those morphs. If those morphs aren't there, you're not gonna get anything, okay? Um, the rest of it, the only important other thing is to say embed media. Okay, because that's going to give you any textures that you've got mapped to things. Uh, for FBX file format, uh, FBX 2014, 2015 worked okay for me. Uh, go ahead and, you know, pop that out. I'm going to open up Unity and then I'm going to show you what this looks like. Okay, so now I'm back in Unity. Um, or I'm in Unity, I, I, I suppose I should say. Um, what I'm going to do under, I just made a blank 3D project. And I'm in Unity 2019-2.2. I'm going to go to create folder, we call this models. It's a good, good habit to get into. And then um, this is where my uh, my uh, file was, just in my 3D Studio Max uh, export folder. So I'm going to go into that and then drop that FBX right into my models folder. And double click on it. And then you can open up this um, extension here. And if you look at the inspector, I should be able to zoom in here. Oh, and a couple other things too. When you when you open it up in the inspector, you go to animation. You want to uncheck resample curves. Otherwise, what you're going to get, I'll show you. It gets it can get uh, kind of flickery. You see that? Kind of flickers. Not cool. But look at it though. It does animate. Like it's moving. It's waving. That's a happy uh, hammerhead shark. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uncheck resample curves, and then go to apply. And it's going to do its thing for a little bit. And now look at that. Look at how smooth that is. Pretty good. Looks like he's a little rotated, but we can, we can pretty much fix that though. But that's, that's the general uh, way to do that. Um, we can talk some more about uh, how to, how to loop these things how to change the speed of them, you know, that, that kind of thing. But that's the overall, uh, the way that that needs to be exported. I might have, I might need to change the plane of the shark, uh, when we, when we're working on it in studio max, that might be a function of that path controller. Like I told you about, if it's not oriented correctly, um, or we might need to, to reposition it when we put it into unity. But, but for now, like, let's just say that's how you get a, a, a world deformation, uh, modifier, uh, a world space modifier into Unity and have it export uh, as a uh, as a vertex uh, transformation. That's so that's so that's pretty good. And again, there's lots of little things you can play with with that, but that's a that's a good 20 minute tutorial uh, right there. Anyway, I will post a link to the video that this references, and I will post a link to the script that I used. Um, this is all pretty experimental. If you're someone who's not in my classes watching this video, I'm probably not going to be able to help you with it. Uh, this is just to kind of help get my students on the on the same page. But uh, hopefully this helped you, Internet people, if you were uh, kind of stumped by that other video. And uh, that's it. I will uh, see you around.